this is my mini mill. I've had it a little over a month. Um, had a little bit of trouble getting it going all the way. Uh, got it to cut wood uh, pretty well early. Uh, but then I wanted it to cut aluminum and I kept running into problems. Uh, it turned out to be some uh, EMI problems. Uh, the router was it's not a grounded router. I grounded it and rerouted some of the wires and uh, now it cuts aluminum just fine. Um, my bill plate here is uh, about four and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. That's about the biggest you can get with this throat. And I've decided I want to uh, put this uh, into use to make some production items that are uh, quite a bit bigger. Uh, so all these parts, I'm going to uh, transform it into uh, the MMXL is what I'm calling it. Uh, Mini Mill Extra Long as opposed to Extra Large. Uh, the goal is a build area of about 10 inches by 20 to 24 inches. It would be pretty easy to get it to 20 inches. Uh, but there's some, the only thing I need to cut that's longer than that is uh, wood. And I think I, I can, I know I'll have enough travel uh, with my design. But I'll have to cantilever uh, the spoil board a little bit. But I think that'll be okay for what I'm going to cut with it. Anyway, so, uh, but easily 10 inches by 20 inches. Uh, the goal is to use as many parts as possible from the mini mill uh, to uh, produce this, having to buy as few parts as possible. Now, I had some spare parts already. I actually had a build plate uh, already from, I was going to use it on my 3D printer, but I ended up cutting my own plate for that or having one laser cut. Um, so I'm going to use a build plate to start with. Uh, that'll give me about a 10 by 16 in the plans, and then I will use that 10 by 16 build area to cut a custom plate. Uh, it'll take it to 10 by 21 or 22, and then with a cantilevered uh, spoiler, uh, 10 by 24, hopefully. That's the goal. Uh, I've gone through it. I haven't made a complete bill of materials yet. I will. I've, I've tried to get enough spare parts for everything. Um, it will. It's going to require six additional V-wheels um, and about 10 additional corner brackets. Um, a bunch of uh, 10 millimeter screws and 8 millimeter screws and 25 millimeter screws, a few spacers, nuts, and so on. So some of the parts, the the uh, the y-axis, sorry, the y-axis of the mini mill is going to become the uh, x-axis of the MMXL. Uh, the uh, x-axis of the mini mill will be completely disassembled and the stepper and uh, everything will be used on the new y-axis. Um, the 250 length of C-beam for the uh, x-axis and the support column in the back, those are both 250, those will be the supports for the uh, new x-axis, which is the y-axis. Uh, the z-axis will remain pretty much unchanged. Uh, I will add a plate to the back to ride on the new x-axis. Okay, and I'll be reusing uh, a lot of the the uh, corner brackets and the, the the other brackets that hold it together. So uh, I will I will try to document it through photographs, maybe a few videos as I go along. Uh, the main idea is the the uh, new y-axis is going to be a thousand millimeter c-beam okay and so I got a thousand millimeter c-beam I got a thousand millimeter which is actually 1040 uh, lead screw uh, then I got two a thousand millimeter um, 20 by 60 uh, v-slot those will form the frame 
and the frame will be put together much like the C-beam machine. Okay, so uh, I'll document it as I go along, so stay tuned.